Welcome to yesterday's airlines and in today's review we're going to take a look at the new Aviation 400 Royal Australian Air Force KC-30A which is an Airbus A330 MRTT. Now AV400 have been the first to market with a military A330 or at least one which is clearly a military A330 anyway and they have produced three versions, this Royal Australian Air Force version, a Singapore Air Force version, and a Royal Air Force version. Um, the first two of those um, are slightly more detailed than the Royal Air Force version because they are fitted with the tail boom. So this is quite uh, a novel and interesting new release from AV400, um, and it is a review that I have undertaken already in the print. So if you wanna see the written review of this, then please go to modelairliner.com and check it out. But in this review, hopefully you'll get you know, a bit of a closer look at the model through the video. As always with my reviews, um, then I score the model on three separate components. Firstly, there's the mold, then there's the livery, and thirdly, we've got printing and the construction quality. So each of those can get 10 for a maximum combined score of 30. So let's get into the review, first of all, by looking at the mold of this AV400 A330. So clearly this is more than just an A330. This mold has had a huge number of additions put on it, but if I first start by looking at the base aircraft itself, then you can see it looks pretty good, not um, far from the way an A330 ought to look. This is actually the third AV400 A330 that I've acquired, um, and you can see it actually looks a bit better than the civilian versions. This one here in the background, this China Eastern, is also on the same mold, but doesn't look anywhere near as good as the Air Force example. And I think that's partly because the nose is a little bit sharper on the military version. And also you'll see that there's some changes at the nose gear. The tie hub is smaller on the military version. It looks much better sized. So actually the new version, the military version looks a bit better than the civilian version. Also you can see on the civilian one, which is fitted with the Rolls-Royce engines, they're a bit close to the ground. There's not a lot of ground clearance. And that's partly because I think the undercarriage is a bit short on the AV400 mold. That isn't really such an issue with the military version because you can see that it's fitted not with the Rolls-Royce Trents, but with the General Electric CF6s. And the pylon mounting is better. The ground clearance is better. And overall, it's a better looking aircraft. I still think the landing gear is a little bit short though, I have to say. In every other respect though, the base mold is good. The rest of the fuselage shape is good. The wings are good. Tail region stabilizers also look good. No major issues with the rest of the mold. Of course, you're not buying this to get an A330. You're buying this to get what the Aussies call a KC-30. And so it is all the additions which are gonna make the big difference to you. And Aviation 400 have proven themselves to be spectacularly good at little details. Already their models come with navigation beacons, as you can see here on the roof of the A330 and on the underside as well. So this one has even more, it's got two sets of beacons on the top and on the underneath, but it also has a huge number of other additions, like for example, these under fuselage ECM strakes. It's got a large number of additional components that have been attached, aerials. It's got the little camera booth here for the um, viewing the refueling. Of course, it's got the ARBMS, the Airbus refueling boom itself, at the rear here. This is a really nicely done, a really nicely added part of the frame, and you can see that it hangs down very well. You can move it up and down, and it actually sits up against the bottom of the fuselage quite nicely, as well as being able to move down into a multiple positions. It's quite tight. You can also move it side to side, which I'm not actually sure the real thing can even do, to be honest. Looking at the top, again, there's lots of extra details. Look, even tiny little additional pieces like this above the tail have been added, as well as this nice lattice array above the fuselage. It's got really nice detailing. In addition, 
You've got the other airy falling pods under the wings, the Cobham 905s. They've got the little prop on the front, doesn't spin, but it is there. Really good detail additions. I've previously, previously scored this mold as a seven, but to be honest, um, the improvements to the nose and the landing gear probably will put it, push it up to an eight anyway. All these additional bits, this is definitely a nine. So it's not the best A330 on the market, but the additions are excellent. It looks really nice. Incidentally, if you want to know what I think the best A330 on the market is, it's probably this one here, which is the Panda models. You can see it is a very nice A330. Just slightly better nose, slightly better nose gear than the standard AV400 mold. Okay, so what about the livery? Well, it's not really a livery at all, is it? But nonetheless, AV400 have the dark grey colours of the Royal Australian Air Force. Correct, the titles are correct. It's the right font, it's the right size, it's the right place. You've got the kangaroo in the roundel on the under fuselage. You've also got it on the top and the bottom of the wings as well. So can't argue with that. And on the tail, you can see, perhaps I'll move around. You've also got the Frigate Bird logo, which is the logo of number 33 squadron who fly these aircraft. So I think that there's no real issues with the paint on this. It's all accurate, everything's there. You've got lots of detail markings to go with it. On the underside, especially nice if you've got the belly striping and the striping on the wings. Really good detail, really nicely put together. So I think this one is gonna be scoring a 10 out of 10 for delivery. Now I've already waxed lyrical about the uh, detail that has been put into the additions on this mold. They are great. The printing is also very nice. It is one of the things that AV400 are very good at already. You can see, for example, here that the printing of the Point where the air refueling boom can actually refuel the air refueling tanker itself is really nicely done. Also, if I flip over again, underneath the ALBMS, really nice printing detail there. Across the board, the printing is very good, very tight, no mistakes, no smudges, really good job there. So it's great on the printing side of things. In terms of construction, I haven't seen any issues with it. As you see, the boom hangs nicely. It can be moved into different positions. All the other components of the aircraft that have been added are really nicely put on, which is something that is, is really hard to achieve, to be honest, at this scale. I think that this is a beautifully made model. And another 10. So overall, this is a great model. I think that it's really nice to see manufacturers try new things, things that nobody else has done before. And AV400 have certainly pushed the envelope here by producing a model with over 30 additional components um, on top of the standard A330 mold. So it's a really, really nice model, really well put together. Overall it gets 29 out of 30, it could easily score top marks. And even though I don't collect military aircraft, this one, is a keeper.